Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Reeti and I am back with another lecture in the DBMS series. So without any further ado, let's get started. So as the name suggests, role-based access control. So whenever we give the control to any user based on their role for our database system, we use this role-based access control mechanism. Now role-based access control is a security system that controls that who can access a database or system based on their role in the organization. So based on the specific role in a given organization, we provide some access control to the users. Now consider that there is a team which is working on making ID cards for the employees. Now for that, they will need the details of the employees like first name, last name and different things. So we provide an access to the database to this particular team. Now consider that this particular team is doing some read operations on the database. That is okay because they need some user details. But consider if this particular team is doing some write access or doing some modification in the database. That is not allowed because this is a security breach. So for that particular reason only we provide some access. So instead of giving permissions directly to each user, the system creates role with the specific permission and user are assigned according to these roles. Now for example, a database administrator might create roles like DB read for reading the data and DB be right for modifying the data. Only people with the right role can read and change the information. So we'll provide a DB read to this particular team so that it can read the details which is present in our database, but we won't be providing access for the DB write. Now what is role? So it is basically a set of permission which is associated with a job function. Example, there could be admin, there could be a manager, there could be a developer in different organization. So according to their job function, we provide a different role to different users. Now coming to the permissions. So these are the rights that are granted to perform certain actions such as read operation, write operation, delete operation. So whenever we provide some rights to certain users to perform some certain actions like read operation, write operation, delete operation, we give them permissions. Now coming to users, so these are the individuals who are assigned one or more roles. Now coming to the advantages, so it makes it easier to manage permissions, especially in big systems. So whenever we want to manage permissions, especially in bigger systems or bigger MNCs, we can use RBAC. Now coming to the next pointer, it lowers the risk of misuse by making sure users only have access to what they need for their role. So if there are two users, user 1 and user 2, if I've given the access for DB read, user 1 can only perform read operations if I have given the user to as db read as well as db write, it can go ahead and do some modification as well as read the data. So according to the role they are able to use the data, they can't go ahead and misuse any data. Now coming to the third pointer that is it improves the security and help keep rules consistent across the system. So it helps us to increase the system security. Now, encryption in databases refers to the process of converting the data into a secure format that can only be read or accessed by someone with the correct decryption key. So what we do is, if there is a data D1 which is present in our system, we will encrypt this particular data into a secure format like there would be some stars, there would be some A, B, C, there would be some equal to like some special characters, some alphabet, mixture of everything. So we'll encrypt this particular data and then the person who is having the correct decryption key can only go ahead and decrypt this data and read this particular D1. So this is what encryption in database means. So this helps in protecting sensitive information from the unauthorized access. Since we have encrypted our data, any person who is having the decryption key can only go ahead and read the actual data. Otherwise, the person will be seeing the special characters and alphabet combination, which doesn't make any sense. So we are securing our data from any unauthorized access or any hackers. So for example, an MNC might use encryption to protect protect their records in their database. Even if a hacker gains access to the database, they wouldn't be able to read the data without the decryption key. So even if the hacker have the access, it will be only able to read this particular data, not this data because this data needs the decryption key and which should be a correct decryption key. Now what are the types of encryption? First one is at rest, second one is in transit, third one is column level and fourth one is full disk. So let's learn about each and every one of them. So first one is at rest encryption. So at rest encryption protects the data stored in the database by encrypting it whenever it's saved to the disk. So whenever we are saving our database to the given disk or you can say secondary memory, it encrypts the data whenever we are saving the database. At that particular time only, it encrypts the data. This means that if someone gains access to the physical storage or the database files, they won't be able to read the data without the encryption key. So since while saving the data which is present in our 
our database in the disk we are encrypting the data anyone who gains the access to our disk or our physical storage won't be able to read the data because the data which is stored in the disk is in encrypted format so example a company encrypts employee salary records stored in their database if someone accesses the database files directly they see encrypted data like xyz123 at the rate hash instead of the actual salary figures so whenever we are storing the salary data in our disk we will encrypt that particular data so whenever someone tries to access this particular data they will be seeing this particular data not the real data because that requires a decryption key now coming to the next one that is in transit encryption so in transit encryption secures data as it moves between the database and the applications or the user so whenever there is a fetching of data from the database which is happening by a user it tries to encrypt the data that time only so this is typically done using secure communication protocols like ssl tls to prevent the eavesdropping or the tampering during the data transmission so for example when you send an email in transit encryption in shows that the email content is scrambled while traveling to the recipient server so whenever a user one is going to send a email to user so this particular data is encrypted while traveling from user one to user two or sender to recipient so even if it is intercepted it appears as a random characters like this and that is unreadable coming to the next one that is column level encryption so column level encryption encrypts specific columns within the database this is used when only certain pieces of data like credit card numbers or social security numbers needs to be protected leaving the rest of the data unencrypted for easier access so whenever you want to encrypt some highly valuable data which is present in our database you use this column level encryption because column level encryption only does encryption on some specific columns which is having some highly valuable data so for example a database holds user information with a column for social security numbers that is ssn this column is encrypted so an ssn like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 might be stored at this particular way in the database so that if anyone access this particular column they will be able to see this special characters and need a decryption key so that this particular data will be encrypted this is used whenever you want to encrypt some special column which is having highly valuable or highly risky data coming to the last one that is full disk encryption so full disk encryption encrypts the entire disk where the database is stored this ensures that all the data that is stored on the disk is protected not just the database but any files logs or backups stored on that particular disk so what we do here is we encrypt the entire disk which is having the database some transaction logs some backup files so that if anyone has any access to the disk he or she won't be able to see anything like the database the transaction logs or any files which is present in the disk so for example a laptop which is used by an employee is encrypted if the laptop is stolen the entire disk is protected so whenever our laptop gets stolen we can be assured that our entire disk is encrypted so no one can go ahead and access the data so and the thief would be only able to see encrypted data like this one instead of the readable files so if the thief who has stolen our laptop would be able to only see the data like this which is in an encrypted format and the thief won't be having the decryption key that will be only available with the user so he or she won't be able to fetch anything from our laptop So what are some of the common data masking technique and what exactly data masking is So data masking means hiding or changing sensitive information so it's protected from unauthorized access This allows the data to be used for things like testing analytics or training without exposing the real data The goal is to create a data that looks real but isn't actually the original information Now for example a bank needs to train its machine learning model to detect the fraudulent transactions to protect customers personal information the bank uses data masking to replace the real account numbers and transaction details with fake but realistic looking data so what we do is we replace the account numbers and transaction details with some fake data but that is some kind of a realistic data that is not the original data or that data which will be coming whenever we are doing a get query on our database which is present in the bank but that is kind of a fake data which is giving us a realistic look but that is not the original data so this way the models can be trained effectively without risking the exposure of actual customer data so consider if there is a ml model which we want to train now here we won't be providing the real data right we can't expose the real data to any machine learning models or any of 
the APIs. So what we do is we give some fake data which looks like a original data and on basis of this data we train this particular model so that whenever this particular model is implemented in real life scenario and whenever there is an original data which is coming to this particular model it acts in a way in which we want. Now coming to some of the common data masking techniques. So first one is substitution. So replacing sensitive data with random but realistic looking values. For example, swapping real names with random names from a list. So what we have is we have a names list which is having all the real names which is present in our database. So this is having all the real names which is present in our database. But I want to do some API testing for which I need the names, but I can't use the real names. So what I'll do is I'll create a random list which is having some random names. So we can use this random names for the API testing rather than the real names. So for example, a company's employee database containing social security number that is SSN. To mask these, the company replaces the real SSN with randomly generated fake SSN. So consider if I have this particular SSN which is present in my database and for testing I want a SSN. So what I'll do is I'll replace this real SSN with some fake SSN and I'll substitute some of the values from this real SSN with some random values so what I'll do here is this is my real SSN which is present and now I have to make some realistic or you can say a fake accessin so that I can use this for testing so I'll substitute some of the values consider at 2 I am giving some random value 9 in 3 I am giving some random value 8 in 4 I am giving some random value 0 in 5 I am giving some random value 6 so in this way I'll substitute it with some random values and create a fake accessin which can be used for my testing now coming to the next one that is shuffling so rearranging the values within a column so that the data remains realistic but it's not linked to the original records so in substitution what we were doing is if we had any value which is present in our database considered that this was a SSN number which is present in my database I was substituting some of the values with some random values so here I was substituting consider 1 with any random value 9 2 with any random value 8 3 as it is then 4 with any random value 1 5 with any random value 3 then 1 then 1 with any random value 0 and 1 so in this way I was creating a random but original looking data in shuffling what it says is consider if we have two columns name and phone number now for a particular name Riti, we had a phone number 123, for Raj, we had 456 and for Rahul, we had 890. Now what we will do is we will shuffle the phone number in the column which is present so that consider right now I have shuffled so now Riti is having 456. Raj is having 890 and Rahul is having 123. So we have shuffled the data and now this particular data we can use because 456 is linked with Raj but right now I am using 456 for Riti. So now for Riti 456 is a random value. So consider an example a hospital has a list of patients with their birth dates. To protect privacy the hospital shuffles the birth date among the patients. For instance patient A birth date was 115-1990 which might be swapped with patient B's birthday that is 7 1985 so what we had done is if there are patient records which is present in my patient table I am shuffling the birth date of some specific patient to protect the privacy so that other people can't come ahead and access my real name my real birth date and different things so we are just shuffling the data between the records which is present in our table now coming to the third one that is encryption so encrypting a data so that it is unreadable without the decryption key so we can encrypt the data so that it is unreadable without the decryption key now this can be used in the form of masking if the data does not needs to be human readable so for example a retail company encrypts credit card number in its database a number like 411111 might be encrypted to something like this one which is having some random characters alphabets uh, special characters and much more things which can't be read without the decryption key so once we have the decryption key only then we can read this data now coming to the next one that is nulling out so replacing some sensitive data with null values or placeholders like x this can remove the original original data but may reduce the usefulness of the data set. So consider that I have my first name as Riti Kumari. So what I'll do is I'll use this Riti here but I want to do some nulling out of the last name. So I'll provide KU and then X, 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 X for the number of characters which is left. So example an HR department wants to share employee records for analysis but needs to hide the salary information. They replace the salary field with the null values or placeholders like X, 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 X. So in this way we can hide the salary information and can display the other details. 
Now coming to the next one that is number variance. So altering numeric data by adding or subtracting a random value with a certain range. So whenever we want to alter the data by adding or subtracting some value of a given certain range, we use this number variance. For example, changing salary figures slightly to mask the data for the exact amounts. So for example, a finance department needs to protect the exact sales figure but still wants to share the data for the trend analysis. They slightly alter the figures by adding or subtracting a small random amount. For example, a sales figure of $10,000 might be changed to $10,020 or $9,980 so that we are able to analyze the trends but we are able to mask the data as well. We are not showing the original or the real data. Now coming to the next technique that is tokenization. So tokenization is a technique used to replace sensitive data with non-sensitive equivalents called as token. So what we do is consider if we have a credit card. So we have some numbers 4, 5, 1, 6, 3, 3, 2, 6. 1, 2, 4, 1. Consider that this is a credit card number. So what we will do is we will give some tokens for some of the digits of this credit card number. So these tokens can be stored or processed without exposing the original sensitive data while maintaining a mapping to the original values when needed. So whenever we want to maintain the mapping to the original values, like consider that these particular values are replaced by the token and we want to know that what are the original values for that particular token. So that is stored in a token vault. So there will be a token and then a the particular value for that particular token. So example, imagine a database that store customer credit card information. To protect the sensitive data, tokenization can be applied. Each original credit card number is replaced with a unique token. Consider TK, N, X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3. Now these tokens have no meaningful relationship to the actual credit card numbers. So these tokens doesn't have any meaningful relationship with the actual numbers of the credit card, but we provide this tokenization so that we can mask our sensitive information so this was all about common database masking techniques i hope you like this video so if you like this video please hit the like button if you're someone who is new to my channel can go ahead and watch out the tech content first and if you find it useful can go ahead and subscribe also if you have not followed me on my social media handles you can go ahead and follow the links are in the description till then take care keep learning keep growing keep smiling bye all